Welcome back my finance nerds. I hope everybody's had a good weekend so far. It's now what gonna be hump day by the time I release this. But has everybody seen the crazy surge in Afterpay shares? After the news that Tencent came out and took 5% ownership of the company. With the fluctuations in the charts, you can see there were some insane tradings and profits for those who were in, which I saw one person's trades who made well into the six figures. And when he posted that on Facebook, he got a ton of hate for it. You know, a lot of comments around sentiments regarding gambling and all that type of stuff. Honestly, I can't even hate on him. He took the risk for it, put the money into it. Like he put a lot of money into it and made six figures in terms of profit out of it. Anyways guys, with that out of the way, we're in the second part of our WAC series. And today we're going to be talking about one of Australia's tech stock darlings in Appen, which in my opinion has one of the greatest growth potentials, but also has many limiting factors that you can consider once it reaches a certain point, which I'll discuss in this video. But guys, before I go any further, you guys know the drill, please smash the like button below because this video does take hours for me to put together. It takes the research, it takes the writing, then the filming, and then the editing. All that type of stuff takes a lot of time. So if you're gonna smash the like button, at least smash it on an odd number, like once, three times, five times, seven times. Thanks, all right, let's get into the video. So let's get into the business model and what Appen actually does. So the company collects and labels images, text, speech, audio, video, and many other forms of data to improve artificial intelligence systems, or as many of us know it to be AI. So it's basically a machine learning service that has large data set that can help their customers, which include search engines, speech recognition systems, social media platforms, and e-commerce. The company is now operating in its 24th year and has a strong expertise in 180 different languages and contractors in 130 different countries. So safe to say, it's quite global and diverse. So in some of the features that I've just mentioned, you can see a lot of these autoresponders or AI systems in chatbots, digital assistants, and recommendations in search engines. But given there's a voice recognition involved, this extends to products and services that can make use of voice recognition like your series, your Google Home, or taking on tasks such as dictating an SMS text from voice into your phone. Now, whenever we hear the concept of AI, or when I hear the concept, I shouldn't assume, <laughs> the concept of AI, I always assume that, you know, the computer is so smart that it should just learn this stuff without looking at the back end of how it actually works. But go figure, AI can't teach itself like we might like to think it does. It actually, there is no like I tree wizardry that happens in the background. There's a lot of people power and work that goes on behind the scenes for this to happen. So for an AI system to all function properly, it requires human input of data sets to determine a response or an outcome. So an example of this would be if I said a certain word, I know this is a camera and not a phone, but if I said a certain word into a phone and that phone picks up that word and there's an annotation or a command that goes along with that word. So when you give Google or Siri certain instructions, they know exactly what to do with it because there's been annotation and directions or code given to those words that you've spoken. Not sure if I explained it clearly enough, but essentially that's the data set. Now, when I was reading through what the company provides in terms of a service, I was wondering how they've actually gathered their data set and actually found out that they employ people online and there's like a whole YouTube videos on what it's like working for Appen with thousands of views. So there's major interest in working for the company from home, which let's be honest, if you're a stay at home mom, a person looking for a side hustle or whatever it may be, we could all use with a little bit of side income. Now I actually sat through about two to three of these videos because I actually want to understand on the ground level what the work is like and whether the employees were getting treated well. And most of the people were rather positive about the whole experience and mentioned that once they joined, you get put into a project group and complete tasks and get paid based on the tasks that you complete. So it seems like these projects and tasks are to collect specific data sets the company needs to compile together to create a range for the AI to work within. Now this is a really interesting model and shows you the methodology behind how they grab and obtain data. It's actually quite a laborious task and requires a lot of, well, people power behind it. Now when you're generally thinking about a normal company, you wanna reduce overhead. And where do you reduce overhead? In the main two things in terms of facilities, so like office and workspaces because leases go up every year, and also in terms of people power. You don't really want a lot of employees because, well, you've got lots of things to pay for, including insurance. However, in 2019, Appen paid 
50,000 people per month to provide them with these data sets. And based on their numbers, this number is only going to grow. So now understanding that they gather data sets from contractors or people working online internationally, let's see how the company is actually performed. So in their 2019 annual report, they've made over $536 million in revenue, which was 47% up from 2018. But now just looking at the numbers, it seems like this reliance thing is making up the majority of the income. But what the heck's a reliance? So not knowing what this is, obviously I scoured the report and tried to piece the puzzle together for myself in order to explain it to you guys. So the service was formerly known as Content Relevance, which basically helps improve the accuracy of searches in e-commerce, search engines, and social media applications, which is differentiated from its speech and image services that assist AI. Now given I'm sometimes lazy, Actually, I'd like to refer to it as being resourceful. I didn't want to do a lot of reading, so I actually went and saw an interview with the CEO who explained it in the video quite well. Well, you'd hope so, right? It's his business. So he basically described the service with an example. In situations where potential customers are in e-commerce stores, they go online, search for their products, but using whichever search terms we think, or they think, best describes the item, and based on the range that the AI in the e-commerce store is working on, the item might appear, it might not appear which results in the loss of sales. So relevance comes in and assists in solving that. So customers can find what they want. Now for social media purposes, when I search something, it'll come up with more relevant searches. Get it, it's in the name, relevance. It'll come up with more relevant searches depending on my location and culture. Not sure exactly what that means, but it's probably part of the data set. So for example, if I was searching up for a burger place, which might have a chain somewhere in the US, it'll come up with the one that's closest to me. So I can actually go to it and visit it, which makes a lot more sense, right? Now we know the difference between the two main offerings that they have at the moment. And the other offerings include data around autonomous driving and providing training data for cars to determine what's a tree, a person, and specific road signs. So with all those things being said, you can see my excitement behind the stock because it's like the future. But seriously, it has a lot of potential to assist so many companies out there, especially the big guys in tech at the moment who are really delving into voice. So with the high quality information they are providing to their customers who are paying millions of dollars for these data sets, well, according to the reports, they have about eight out of 10 of the global top tech companies who are using their services. So that's like a, yeah, that's a pretty big deal. To be honest with you, given this fact, I'm surprised the revenue isn't a lot higher. What I will make clear, and I had to look into this, is that Appen has acquired big customers through the acquisitions of other businesses, including Butler Hill, who brought along Microsoft as a big tech client. Although Appen doesn't directly disclose this within their reports, I'm assuming because there's some NDA or something like that, because otherwise that's like a great marketing ploy if you just want to shoot your stocks through the roof. But there are some speculations back in 2017, 18, that Facebook and Microsoft made about 75% of its revenue. Now those numbers would be much different now given it's about two to three years ahead, but their top tech companies would be creating most of the revenue and Appen's plans is to continue to use its service to help any new products these companies want to bring forth. The company also has a big contract with US governments to assist in disaster relief missions, in particular in developing AI to recognize issues and assigns resources in terms of priority. Now, of course, all this future tech and robotic kind of stuff is all very well and impressive, but we've always got to go back to the one thing and that's the balance sheet, baby. Let's get back into it. Now, after understanding that the operation is a rather labor intensive business that requires people from around the world, my next question was, are they actually making a profit? Because we all know that growth stocks like Afterpay, Afterpay, and uh, no, I'm just kidding, Amazon, like those other companies which are growth stocks, they were running at a loss and in debt for the most part, but their share prices continue to skyrocket. However, here, we can see that for Appen, like WiseTech in the last part of the series, link up above or down below for that if you wanna check that out, does make a profit, a healthy one, at $64.7 million. And again, as mentioned before, we can see that the majority of that comes from the relevance data service that it provides. But there was mentioned in the interview that speech and image data has the biggest future growth potential, especially in the space we currently are in, where we see Siri, Amazon's Alexa, and the Google Home products. What I also really like about this balance sheet is that scrolling through it, they've got like $75 million in cash. Like that's more than what they've made in annual profit for the year. That's insane. And as of the 31st of December 2019, they're operating debt free. And last year, I mean, they took out some debt, but like the debt was $56,000, which is really nothing. Yeah, you might as well just say they were operating debt free anyways last year. I mean, it, it's really small in comparison to what they're making. In February, the company put out an announcement, which was confirmed later on by their CEO, that COVID has really had 
very little impact on their business model at all because most of their workers were working from home anyways and the majority of their contractors you know the 50,000 people that get paid every single month they're all online so it really doesn't affect their business model that much at all and the services they're assisting guess where they are they're online also and they're tech companies so there is really little that is affecting Appen at the moment in terms of this whole well pandemic and what's interesting to note in the announcement is that Due to the spike in growth of the speech and image business that they have, the profit margin in that is increasing because they're scaling in terms of size. Now, what I thought was really funny was when you scroll to the bottom, they've included a nice little dividend as well of, well, five cents a share. Anywho, guys, going through this, it's been quite interesting. I actually quite like the company, Appen. Um, yeah, it's popping. Probably my favorite so far out of the WAC stocks. Like, I know Afterpay. I now know WiseTech. We've now looked at Appen, and Appen looks like a real growth engine despite Afterpay just shooting through the roof. I guess my only concern would be how far can they keep providing data sets until their service becomes irrelevant and you know the big tech boys already have what they need and so they just leave it as is. But based on what they're doing and how laborious the task is, I think they'll be around for a while and I think they're going to do really, really, really cool things. Like if you just look at their growth numbers, when I looked at Webjet, they were growing by double digit percentages, right? But these guys are growing by double digit percentages like 20% plus. Like it's... Psh so far away and they're not affected by covid like brah so that's it from you guys let me know your thoughts below is app and a buy for you have you been watching it what are your thoughts on it after this videos anyways guys catch you next time cheers